brothers and sisters, I'm not on here very much because, like I told you, I'm doing a lot of deliverance cases, and my work, deliverance cases, has increased significantly. And also, ministering to families whose military kin are on deployment and ministering to them. There's a few things I need to go over with you, but first, things first. There are false prophets that are telling you that the Lord Jesus Christ never sent Mary Kay Baxter to hell. One of the false prophets that are preaching this, her name is Rachel Sheriff. I exposed her as a false prophet that she is. She does not hear from the Lord, neither does her mother. As I told you before, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord's not going to give his prophets 20, 30, 40, 50 words a day, and the words have no consistency. That is why it's very important that you test the spirits, because individuals like these hear from the devil, and they will cost you your very soul. I went into my prayer closet this morning, and I spoke to Jesus Christ personally. He said that he sent Mary Kay Baxter to hell. He showed her hell. Her testimonies are accurate. Her testimonies align with scripture and align with countless other brothers and sisters in Christ who have been to hell. I'm not defending Mary Kay Baxter. I'm not saying she's a prophet of the Lord. I don't know that. What I'm telling you is, is that her testimony of hell is accurate. I've been to hell, I was shown hell, I seen hell, and my testimonies of what Mary saw, I saw. I have other brothers and sisters in Christ that have seen hell. What they saw, Mary Kay Baxter saw. So the devil is using this person to make you believe that hell is not real when it is. Okay? Mary Kay Baxter's testimony has led many, many souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil is using Rachel Sheriff to convince you and other false prophets like her that Mary Kay Baxter's testimony is not true. So that way you can believe that hell is not real and that God is not a judge, that he will not punish you. And no matter what sin you commit, he's paid for it on the cross. He's forgiven you a long time ago. And about that one saved, always saved doctrine. And this aligns with the prosperity gospel that God is love and God will forgive all your sins you could sin as much as you want ladies and gentlemen I am here to tell you that that is not true that if you ever believe that you are saved by grace and you can't and that you don't have to confess your sins anymore and that you don't have to repent anymore because you are technically saved by grace but you still have to confess your sins and repent so that way you don't go to hell if you believe you don't ever have to confess your sins, repent for them, and take responsibility for your actions, you have another thing coming. You're endangering your soul. Okay? I'm just telling you this. What you do with this information, that is totally up to you. But I'm just telling you this. I'm warning you. The devil sending out people like this to convince you that hell is not real. That those that he sends out to testify about hell, that they didn't see hell. That's why I tell you in these last days, you have to test the spirits. Okay? You have to test the spirits. I will repeat what I told you. I am not calling Mary Kay Baxter a prophet. I don't know that. Okay? That is not my call. But her testimony is accurate. She was shown hell by Jesus Christ. And because of her testimony, lots of souls, and it was by the sole power of God, lots of souls were led to Christ. Because the Lord used Mary Kay Baxter to testify of her visions of what she saw in hell. Lots of people were led to Christ. Now this person, this devil's child, is trying to deter that and stop people from coming to the Lord by trying to deny the reality of hell. Okay? I don't care what anybody says. I'm about my father's business. I know hell's real. And I'm going to tell you a little testimony of mine. And this was in the physical. This wasn't in the spirit. Mary Kay Baxter was shown, Lord came to her in the physical, and then he took her to hell in the spirit. She was shown hell. Her testimony matches mine and countless others. 
So if this person is saying that her testimony is not true, then she's saying that thousands of brothers and sisters in Christ that saw hell, that their testimony is not true, and she's calling them a liar. You cannot believe false prophets like that, ladies and gentlemen. There's countless false prophets that are trying to, to uh, they're trying to taint the works of God. But by the grace of God, that will never happen because I curse and rebuke these prophets, these false prophets, excuse me, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I undo what they're trying to do against my father and I render it powerless. Mary Kay Baxter's testimony is an accurate depiction of hell. I've seen hell and I'm going to give you one little synopsis of my testimony. I was sleeping one day. And this is when, in 2011, I completely stepped out of the world. But I, I told you about the one testimony where I was on a train and the Lord sent an angel to me and said, if you don't step out of the world, you don't belong here, but you're going to end up here. And this train looked like a dirty cargo train and there was countless souls headed to hell. And in the train, it was in a giant cavern. And to my right of me, I see a woman sitting down in a chair and she was chained. A glass of water would appear in front of her face. She would try to reach out to drink it, and the glass of water would disappear. The Bible says, okay, that if when you on hell, the, the, the heat is so intense, and I'm paraphrasing, that the fire is never quenched, neither is the thirst. And while I was told by the angel that that woman was put in hell for greed, okay, the Bible also also um, references about the quench of the, the, the quench, the thirst, the quench. Meaning your thirst for water is, is not going to stop. The fire's never quenched. The thirst never quenched. It reminds me of the parable in the Bible about the rich guy and Lazarus. When the, la the rich guy was in hell and, the, and Lazarus, the poor man, was in the arms of bosom in heaven. And the rich man told um, Abraham to have Lazarus dip his, his finger in water and put it on his tongue because it was that hot. And it was that hot. The rich guy was that hot in hell. And he was that thirsty. The hell is real. And the fires do not stop. And you could go to hell for any sin regardless of what it is. That once they've always saved doctrine, ladies and gentlemen, that's the devil's doctrine. Otherwise, why would the Bible call for repentance? To tell you to, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death in the book of Deuteronomy. The Bible says, um, confess your sins, repent ye, repent or ye shall perish. If we're not supposed, if we're saved by our, if we're saved by the blood of Christ, and we're not supposed to go to hell, why does the Bible warn if you don't repent and confess your sins, you're gonna die? Die meaning you're gonna die. Your soul's gonna die in hell. Why does the Bible warn of that? Because it's true. Okay. Now I'm gonna give you my synopsis. I don't want to deviate off the path. I was sleeping. I woke up like 3 or 4 in the morning to go use the bathroom. And I'm not going to forget this. Okay, this is the second warning from the Lord to me. Okay. I felt the ground shake. There was no earthquake. There was no recorded earthquakes up here in the East Coast at all. I felt the ground shake. When I looked down, I saw my floor started to cave in. And was, here's what was weird. And I wasn't dreaming this, okay? What was weird was that when it started to cave in, I saw like a black abyss. And there was like, uh, it was wet. Look wet because there was fire illuminating off the walls. And I heard souls screaming. And then I heard the Lord say this to me. You, you either hearken and accept your calling or I will cast you in the abyss. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm terrified of the Lord I went down on my knees and I begged the Father for forgiveness. And I said, Father, I'm going to step out of the world. I'm going to follow you no matter where it takes me. I'm going to take my cross, carry it every day, and I'm going to follow you. And I did that and I never looked back. And I saw heaven many times. And I saw Jesus Christ up front, in center, personally. And the Lord told me he never sent these prophets, these false prophets. But yet they run with their false divinations and their false visions. Causing their sheep to fall astray. Causing his children to grieve. You have to be careful who you listen to. Okay? I've warned you many, many times. So I want you to take what I'm telling you to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. And you ask if what I'm telling you is true. Because 
you guys got to be very careful who you listen to. Alright? Be extremely careful who you listen to. Because false prophets and false Christs are rising in these last days. There's also something I have to give you an important update on Jade Helm. I had a dream about that. But, um, when you get a chance, I'm in Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, I'm going to remind you what the Lord said, okay? The Lord said, you have to seek his counsel. If you don't seek his counsel, okay, it's blasphemy. All right? Now, the Lord also warns that even though his servants that he sends out, he wants you to warn, he wants the servants to warn the masses. He warns that nobody's going to listen, which is true. I've noticed that. Listen, meaning taking it to God in prayer and asking him what, he, what, what has been revealed to you is true. Okay. I want you all to read Mark chapter 9. This is confirmation of the message that I had, especially um, Mark chapter 9, verse 19. He answered with him, and with, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. You know, in other words, God is saying to have faith in what he's saying to you when he sends his servants out to you to warn you, have faith. Trust in what? Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, have faith. Have enough faith to go to Jesus Christ in your prayer closet. And ask if what is being said is true. So Mary K. Baxter's testimony is accurate. Do not listen to people that are telling you it's not. I'm not defending her as a prophet of God. I don't know that. But I know her testimony is true. I told you people, all of you, that if I feel that if somebody's telling the truth, after I prayed on it, I'm going to let you know. And I'm letting you know. Her testimony is accurate. Now, regarding Jay Helm. They are operating in secret. Something's wrong. Something's very wrong. I feel it in my spirit. I get emails from brothers and sisters in Christ. They ask me, what's going on? Jade Helm is being secretive. I see this in my town. I see these vehicles in my town. I mean, I get email from people all the way out to Texas, Nevada. They see all this stuff in their town. I get emails in my inbox, in my personal email. They see this. They see that. They're wondering what's going on. I'm here to tell you, this nation is preparing for war. Point blank. This nation is preparing for war. It's Bible prophecy. You guys need to get your house in order. Get ready. The Lord will instruct his righteous on what you need to do. He told me to tell you not to worry. He told me to tell you to warn you people, the righteous people, to stay ready. Wait on the Lord's instructions. You will know what to do, not to worry. Give your burdens and your fears to the Most High God. I had a dream that I saw, okay, inside one of these facilities of Jade Helmet. It's another one from the last one that I told you about, okay. What it looked like, it looked like some kind of a plant, where they were manufacturing different types of weapons and different types of biological warfare. I had this dream last night. Again, I want you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Ask him if what I tell you is true. We are in the last days. Jesus Christ's arrival is imminent. Even though no man knows the day, the hour, or the year, he's coming. I feel it in my spirit. It is very unusual at the rate that Bible prophecy is coming to pass. It is. Jesus Christ also told me something very important about the third temple. About the third temple council that nobody knows. Okay. That they're not bringing to the public's attention that you all don't know either. I'm going to ask the Father if I can reveal that to you. But I can't disclose that now. But it's something that is going to blow your socks off so to speak. It's going to shock you. It's going to stun you. Okay, Israel, the Lord told me that Israel is going to face a lot more tensions. That there are already ISIS insurgents in the city of Jerusalem. 
already in Jerusalem and other parts of Israel waiting for the call so they could start their thing and their attack on Israel. It is Bible prophecy. The United States knows that Israel is in a lot of trouble, but they're turning a blind eye to it. Israel is facing a lot of tension now, but it's not in the news. They're working out the peace deal. Now it's not being covered in the news. Israel's being cornered. That's not being covered in the news. Reference Joel chapter 2. Um, I believe Hezekiah, Hezekiah or Zephaniah 12. I have to look it up. It's all over scripture. It talks about the parting of Israel. And then America is going to be departed 72 hours from the day that they part Israel. I'm telling you 72 hours because I was told that by the Most High. Now remember ladies and gentlemen. The minute that America parts Israel, the Lord's going to divide America. Three days from the time that America, three days from the time that Israel's departed, America will be divided. Just because I tell you three days, it doesn't mean it's three days on man's time. Because think about the Bible. One day, according to Daniel 9.27, represents a year. So... I'm just telling you that three days doesn't necessarily mean man's days. It could be God's days. It works on God's timing, not man's timing. So when Israel's departed, don't look for don't look at your calendar for three days. Three days could be on God's timing. Remember, in Daniel 9 27, one day represents a year. Bottom line is America's gonna pay the price along with the other nations. Jade Helm is going down. They're preparing for war. So while you're going to your job, worried about what you're going to do this weekend, if you're going to spend your time with your fiancé or your wife, your husband, what you're going to eat or what Kim Kardashian show you're going to watch, that garbage, or what other, what other TV filth you're going to watch, don't be offended, okay? They are talking about preparing for war. Not prepare, not just talking about it. They're actually preparing for war. A very large campaign. Okay? So, I'm only telling you this because you guys are saints. Excuse me, guys. I'm in the process of cleaning up too while I'm talking to you. You guys are saints. Excuse me. I'm cleaning up and I'm talking to you at the same time. You guys are saints. Get your houses in order. Do what you need to do to please God, okay? They're preparing for war. They're preparing and they're not telling American people nothing. Okay? They're not telling you that the elites, there's 13 families, 13 bloodlines, handpicked by Satan, 13 demonic entities, demonic council that these elites take orders from, 13 demons that get their orders from Satan. They're not telling you that. There's a lot more stuff they're not telling you. I'm only going to touch it there and I'm going to stop there. And I want you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. And remember, stop listening to false prophets. Test the spirits if they're of God. False prophets will threaten you and say that if you don't listen to them, you're blaspheming God. That you have to trust them. That is not true. The word of 1 John says to try and test every spirit for false prophets, excuse me, and false Christ will arise, have arisen already. God wants you to test the spirits and judge righteously. You have to decipher and discern everything right down to what size shoes you're going to wear. That way you don't get deceived.